Um, yeah. Um, so hello everybody. Um, uh, in this presentation, um, we are going to to see the the main features of, of Google Earth Engine as a cloud computing platform. Um, we are going to see uh, some examples of of developed apps uh, based on on Google Earth Engine. Um, we are going to to explore the data catalog existing um, in the platform. And finally, uh, some basic concepts um, to, to use the, the platform. Later, uh, we will go also to, to the code editor to show some, some examples on how to visualize and, and process a Sentinel-2 image. Um, we will visualize time series from a MODIS vegetation index collection. And we will explore the global forest change product um, developed by Hansen in the, in the platform. Um, so what is exactly uh, Google Earth Engine? Um, it is a, a cloud computing platform uh, that's, that stores geospatial data uh, coming mainly from, from satellites, uh, making available uh, tools to, to access, process, and analyze this information, uh, making it available and, and useful for the research community. Um, to accomplish this, a collaboration from, from different sites and institutions is needed to, to share data. And Google Earth Engine is, is equipped with the Google computational infrastructure that makes possible to run uh, parallel computation services, um, connecting processing uh, units in, in the cloud. And the platform also provides for us a, 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 an application programming interface um, which can be used on JavaScript, which is the, the language uh, for web development, uh, maybe more suite for, for interactive visualization and prototyping, or also in, in Python more designed um, to, uh, to run tasks in, in batch mode in the server. Uh, so in Google Earth Engine, um, we use data by means of proprietary objects um, that makes very easy uh, the management of, of data coming from, from different sources as they are offered in a, in a single format. Also, the processing operations are, are simplified on the client side. Uh, for instance, uh, looping on pixel is, is automatically performed when, when applying uh, particular operations on the images. And next, the data storage and processing infrastructure is, is provided for us. We dispose of, of 250 gigabytes uh, to store our own results in, in, in the cloud. And at the same time, uh, we can manage easily all, all the process um, running in the server from, from the client interface. Um, on the other hand, when it comes to, to share uh, the scripts or, or data, uh, we can do it easily uh, through the code editor, what it is a, a contribution um, with regards to, to reproducibility of, of science. Um, so the database of, of Google Earth Engine includes data coming from Earth observation programs as uh, Landsat or, or Copernicus, storing data of, of Sentinel satellites, um, also MODIS, MODIS data, and uh, not only that, but also stores uh, products of, of, of global land cover uh, as the Copernicus global land cover product or other collections of, of vector data uh, as the world database of protected areas. Also, it stores data of, of climate and, and weather, um, which is very useful for analyzing vegetation in a context of, of climate. Um, in total, the, the amount of, of data sets is, is today of around 700 with around uh, 40 petabytes of data and being added more than uh, 4,000 new images daily. Um, we find here more than 40 years of, of satellite data for our analysis, um, what allows us to, to perform analysis uh, back in time. Um, we can develop customized apps um, with graphical user interfaces um, by using built-in tools um, in order to, uh, to automate the process to visualize, obtain, or, or process specific data. Um, for example, this tool here um, developed for a project uh, called EcoDash uh, as an initiative of, of NASA uh, together with uh, Southeast Asian countries allows to visualize um, variation in the enhanced vegetation index as an indicator of, of disturbances or revegetation 
um, which is uh, useful for, for policy makers or, or researchers. Um, the user can select a specific image uh, time range and, and the variation of the enhanced vegetation index is, is displayed in this map. Um, this another tool was developed in, in our group here uh, by Matias Salinero together with other, other colleagues. And as it appears in this image, um, you can select a specific uh, tile of, of Sentinel-2 and the interface re returns an uh, leaf area index map retrieved by a Gaussian process uh, regression algorithm um, working behind this app. And, and dragging the, the split windows bar here, uh, you can also visualize the image uh, with the gap field data based on, on, on the closest image in time um, with available data. So you, you can compare the image without and, and with gap filling. So this is an example of, of a graphical user um, application that allows anybody to, to easily process and, and obtain uh, visual results. Okay, so uh, now here are some, some concepts are, are needed to, to operate um, with the platform. Uh, we use objects of, of the Earth Engine library of, of diverse types that allows to, to access and, and process data. We find the image type, which is basically raster types storing data by pixels. Uh, then the collection types contain multiple elements, um, equivalent in, in this case as a folder of images. The features are vector types, can be uh, polygons, lines, or, or points uh, with some attributes or, or metadata assigned to, to every data element. Also, we find here the, the array types um, for mathematical and, and multidimensional multi operations. Um, on the other hand, we find uh, objects used to process the, the basic data types, such as the filters for selecting specific data, uh, the reducer for aggregating data, um, the kernels objects, and, and so on. So there are uh, around 30 different type of, of object uh, classes here available. Um, every object is uh, linked to a list of, of methods. Uh, for instance, the, the image accept uh, math band operations and can be processed over, over features uh, to clip the, the images uh, obtaining a subset of the image. Then the features provide basic uh, geoprocessing and analysis tools. The arrays also accept typical uh, matrices operations. And, and on the other hand, converting types is also supported by, by the library, uh, which is very, very useful, for instance, uh, to, to extract data from, from an image and storing it a, 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 in a vector or, or table format that, that can be used later for training a model. Uh, for collection types, we can iterate over any element of the collection. Uh, Let's say that we want to perform a specific operation over each image. Uh, for example, calculating NDVI uh, for every image uh, for which we use uh, the provided method map. Or we can compute statistics uh, for the collection with the, with the method reduce. Also with the filter objects, we can filter specific items in, in the collection based on, on different criteria as bounds, acquisition dates, uh, metadata, or uh, what we would be using uh, uh, filter objects. So we find in this uh, slide examples of, of reduced operations. In the first row uh, at, lo at top left, we see an example of aggregation, uh, can be some average or median over pixels of, of each band. Then in the second one, we apply neighborhood uh, reductions. Uh, next, we see reduction applied to, to a collection of elements. And finally, uh, we find the, the reduced region to, to obtain a single aggregated value, especially uh, average over a defined geometry. We can also apply the, the reduced region on, on multiple features and we will obtain a, a value per, per geometry. Okay, so um, that's, that is, uh, I think the basic concept, uh, we are going to, to put it into practice into, into the code editor. Okay, so here we are in the code editor. Uh, you see it right. Um, uh, 
Okay, so um, you have first to sign up in, in Google Earth Engine um, to have an account, and then you will have access to, to this code editor, uh, which is basically co composed of different windows. Um, here at left, we find the, the scripts area, uh, the documentation where we, we can find uh, all the uh, information about the object and the me method existing. The assets where we produce, uh, we store the, the results, the, the files that we produce, or we can also upload uh, external files. Uh, here we have the inspector uh, that allows to obtain information of, uh, on the data and the layers. The console allows to print uh, information of the objects. For instance, uh, if we uh, print this, hello, uh, it should be appearing here, hello. And the task uh, manager allows to, uh, to manage the, the running task in, in the server. Um, here is where we, we search the, uh, the data sets. Um, we can also uh, share the links, uh, the, the script here in, in this button, and we can share it with uh, any uh, other else. And also um, uh, it is this, uh, uh, useful, very, uh, very useful. This this toolbox that allows to draw a polygon and automatically uh, import it as a geometry variable here that you can use to to intersect a, a collection over this uh, this location. Um, okay, so this is I think the basic of the code editor. We are going to uh, to see some some example applications. Uh, here, what we are going to do first is uh, uh, to visualize an, an, uh, a Sentinel-2 image that we will be used later to, uh, to calculate an NDVI layer. Um, and first, what, I, uh, what we have to do is to define a, a polygon uh, to filter the, the collection. I just uh, uh, defined this polygon near, near Valencia. And next, uh, we have to load the, the collection, the Sentinel-2 collection here. Uh, we can do it uh, like this, Sentinel-2, uh, multispectral instrument level 2A. Oh, I, sorry. So here we are. Um, we, get, we get all the information, the description, uh, the bands in the image. And here we, we import the collection. I've already uh, done it before and, and uh, we can rename it uh, the variable as we like it. I, I, I did it like a Sentinel-2 collection. And uh, okay, next what we do is uh, in these lines, um, we use the Sentinel-2 collection and we filter, um, uh, we, we intersect the, uh, the collection with the geometry that we define. By using the method filter bounds, we pass the geometry as, as an argument. Then we sort it by the less cloudy pixel percentage um, in order to have a, a clear image. Uh, we filter uh, by the date range that we want. In this case, uh, uh, I did it by uh, 1 June 2021 to 30 June. Um, and here we print the information of the uh, created object. In these lines, uh, we, we customize the visualization. Uh, so we select the, the bands in the, in the visible range in order to, to obtain a, a true color image. And then uh, we, with this uh, line, we add the layer to the map. We pass the, the scene, the, the object that we just created uh, with the true color visualization parameters and, and the name of the layer. So uh, if we run the code here, Let's see what happened. Here it uh, appears the information of the object that we created with the bands and, and the properties. And the, the Sentinel-2 image is uh, being displayed in the, here in the, in the map. So we can explore a little bit uh, uh, the image. Uh, it seems that there is a diversity of, of landscapes. Uh, with forest areas, uh, I guess that uh, they are pine trees and also uh, surrounded by, by, uh, by crops areas. 
Okay, so uh, now we are going to see how we can extract a, a spectral profile um, for any, any kind of, of surface. Um, in order to, to do so, uh, we are going to here, let me one second and comment this. Okay, so we define the, the list of the bands for the spectral profile, uh, the list of the wavelengths. Um, we define the options uh, for the chart, and we are going to uh, to obtain a, a chart for two different geometries uh, because I, I want to, to compare between each other. I define this, uh, the next geometries here, which is to be an irrigation crop. And um, and I choose another one here at right, which is another kind of crop in another stage. And I want to, to see the difference uh, between the, the profile of, of the two uh, geometries. Okay. Um, uh, finally, we apply these lines here, uh, which is a reducer um, of type ue.chart.image.regions. And what it does is it, it obtain uh, a single value per band applied to this geometry uh, geometry crop uh, that we just created. Okay, so if we run here the code, let's see what happens. So we obtain uh, we obtain two uh, two chart different. Uh, the one uh, up is uh, maybe more more uh, fit more the typical spectra of, of vegetation. And, and here at town, uh, we, uh, we have influence of, of bare soil. Okay, uh, next thing we are going to do is to calculate uh, NDVI uh, for this Sentinel-2 scene. Let me uncomment the code. And we do uh, so by, um, by defining a near infrared uh, variable uh, by using uh, scene dot select dot uh, band five, which is the near infrared band, uh, and next the the band red, uh, which is the band four, scene dot select dot uh, uh, band four, and finally um, we are going to calculate the NDVI uh, equation with uh, near infrared uh, subtract red and divide by the addition of near infrared and, and red. We define also the visualization parameters here and we add the layer to the map. Okay, um, now we are going to run the code. And here we've got the NDVA layer. We can use the inspector in order to, to obtain information here and we, we get the spectra of the Sentinel-2 image in, in this pixel, and also the value of the NDVI, 0 0.65. Okay, um, uh, let's say that we wanted to, to filter a, a parcel having uh, values of NDVI greater than specific value, uh, for instance, 0 0.5. We can do it just uh, with this line. Uh, uh, and TVI layer uh, dot greater than 0 0.5. And we add the layer to the map. And again, we run the code here. And we should be seen here now the parcels uh, which contain values of NDVI uh, greater than 0 0.5. Okay, um, yeah, so here we are. And uh, if we wanted to, to download this, this image uh, to work in, in local, uh, we could do it uh, with these uh, lines here. Uh, as we uh, export that image, uh, we can do it to, to drive or, or to, to cloud or, or also directly to the, to the assets uh, uh, area here. Okay, so that was the uh, so that was the first uh, example. Uh, we are going to go to the second example. Um, okay. 
one second because I cannot uh, access here. Okay. Um, so here we are now uh, in the second exercise, which is to uh, visualize uh, the time series uh, coming from uh, from a Modis product, which is the Modis uh, 13 uh, Q1. And what we do now is uh, we are going to also to search for a for a surface in order to to apply uh, to visualize the time series. And here I define this this area. Um, you can see here, which is uh, this surface is, is composed of cork oak uh, trees um, belonging to a, an open uh, forest area where uh, normally, uh, currently, uh, degradation processes uh, are being observed. So we are going to, to visualize the, the evolution of, of the time series of NDVI and enhanced vegetation uh, index on this on this surface. And to do so, um, we load the MODIS vegetation index collection. We select the band uh, that we want, NDVI and Enhanced Vegetation Index. And uh, we apply here um, a reducer, which is a ue.chart.image.series. And what it does this function is to, uh, to obtain uh, the data uh, from the collection, apply to this uh, geometry that we defined, and, uh, and using this reducer of type mean. So what we are going to obtain is, is a, a mean value um, per date. Okay. Um, the next are uh, only visualization options for the chart. And I also uh, added a trend line uh, on the uh, EVI to see if, if there is a, a trend in the, in the time series. And, um, we are going to run here the code. And we see here uh, the time series, partially average over this uh, geometry that we define. Uh, the NDVI is defined with this red, uh, red lines here. And uh, the blue line is the enhanced vegetation index. And uh, as we expected, um, we see that uh, the green line, which is the trend line, the EVI, uh, which is uh, uh, a little bit decreasing. Okay, um, so now we are going to go to the uh, last exercise. Um, one second. Okay, so we have here um, uh, the third exercise uh, that is uh, to visualize the global forest change uh, developed by, by Hansen um, using a Landsat time series uh, and decision trees uh, in order to classify pixels uh, with uh, loss in, in forest cover, gain in, in forest cover. And also see, he classified uh, the tree cover uh, percentage in the year 2000. We can have a look here to this product. The bands, uh, the tree cover, uh, which is defined as the tree canopy cover for the year 2000 uh, for vegetation taller than uh, uh, five meters in height. The loss uh, band uh, is defined as a change from a forest to non-forest state and the gain, which is the opposite. And then here we, we find the, the Landsat bands that were used to uh, to produce this uh, this product. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create a, a composition map um, from the different uh, bands by using the uh, the collection that I uh, I imported here, and uh, we select the the corresponding bands: tree cover, loss, and, and gain. And then we uh, update mask. We, we apply a mask for only the, the existing uh, values on, on each band. And then we are, we are going to create a composition map uh, with the different layers uh, 
overlaying between each other. Okay, um, we run here the code. And so we, we obtain the, uh, we visualize the, the three uh, different bands. The red pixels are the, the lost, uh, the, the lost for the cover uh, pixels. The blue ones are the gains. And the, the green is the uh, three cover percent, percentage in the year 2000. And what we see, we see here the global map. Uh, so we see that uh, in North America, there are uh, some uh, uh, territories with, with losses, uh, tropical forest uh, also we, we can see. In the Western of the Iberian Peninsula, uh, there are also some, some regions with, with losses and uh, in the Baltic countries too. And so I guess that uh, many reasons can drive to, to these losses. Um, uh, fires, uh, land use changes, and so on. Okay, um, finally, um, uh, we are going to see how we can calculate uh, the total loss uh, affected area uh, in a particular uh, area that we, we define. So with these lines here, I'm going to use the World Database of Protected Areas uh, to filter a, a specific protected area uh, with the method uh, dot filter, and we pass a, a filter object as filter dot equals uh, uh, with uh, property name equals to Sierra Espada, which is a, a protected area uh, close close to Valencia. And uh, uh, and next, what we do is to use the loss image uh, in order to uh, multiply the, the loss uh, image, the, the pixels with loss, with the pixel area. So we obtain uh, the, the loss image in, in pixel areas units, and uh, we apply a reducer in order to zoom all, all, the, all the pixel areas. So what we obtain finally is uh, um, the total area affected uh, uh, in a particular uh, defined region. And with this uh, command, we print the result in, in, in the console. Uh, we are going to run the code. And we see here uh, 834.95 uh, hectares affected in, uh, uh, sorry that I didn't show the geometry where that was applied. So this is this is the polygon. It is a protected area, and in this area uh, we find 834 point uh, hectares affected with with loss. Um, so with this exercise, I, I I think I get to the end. Um, I have another one of classification, but but maybe it's going to be for the next uh, presentation. Um, so yeah, I think that that's it. Uh, from my side.